What you can see here are two of the biggest challenges that we'll have to face in this century. On this side, the ongoing transformation of the job market due to the recent progress of robotics and artificial intelligence. And on this other side, the adaptation of our lifestyle to meet the goal of sustainability. And I know that at a first glance, these two problems may seem completely uh, unrelated. But looking a bit more closely, we are going to see that actually they are not. Automation could become our best ally in the fight for sustainability, or it could end up making things worse. I'm a robotics researcher working at the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems. And today, I'd like to give you a glimpse of uh, what robots can do and what they might be able to do in the near future to help us build a better society. So let's start by seeing some examples of uh, what robots can already do. In the market of renewable energy, robots are already used for cutting costs. For instance, several robotic startups are using uh, little drones to speed up the inspection of wind turbines. And this has several positive benefits. Uh, now a wind turbine can be inspected in only 20 minutes instead of one hour. And this, of course, has a direct positive effect on the cost of maintenance for these kind of platforms. And most importantly, we now completely eliminated the risk for uh, personal injury because you no longer need human operators like this guy to climb up there for the inspection. Now, the reason behind the success of this robotics application is hidden in the features of the task the robot has to perform. It is a repetitive task with very little variability and it doesn't require any physical interaction between the robot and its surrounding. Let me be a bit more precise about what I mean with these terms. I will use some examples. So let's take, for instance, a robot who has to, to hammer for the whole day. Well, that would be a robot that performs a very repetitive task. But now, if you tell me that the same robot has also to use a screwdriver to drill and, and to sew, now the task has become immediately much less repetitive and it is much harder to, to automate it. Sticking with the hammering robot, if the robot has to hammer nails that are always in the same position with respect to the robot, well, basically, it just needs to do this, which is very simple. But if you now tell me that the nails can uh, be, be in different positions, and maybe they can have different colors and different shapes, well, now the task has a much higher degree of variability, and it's much more difficult to build a robot that can do it, because the robot would need to use its vision to detect where the nails are in order to hammer in the, in the right spot. And finally, sticking with our dear uh, hammering robot, we could imagine that the hammer could be mechanically attached to the system, like in the picture there. And in this case, the physical interaction between the robot and the hammer would be extremely simple because it would be taken care of by the mechanism. If instead we want to go for a more sophisticated human-like hand, uh, then the robot needs to uh, actively control its fingers to ensure that the, 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 the grip is, is, is firm and it can use it to, to hammer. And in this, in this case, the physical interaction between the robot and the hammer is much more complicated. So we are going to see throughout the presentation that robots are typically very good at tasks that are repetitive, that have little variability, and that require only simple physical interaction. Let's see another example of that. Always in the, in the market of renewable energy, robots are being used for cleaning uh, solar panels in the desert. You should know that solar panels need to be cleaned uh, very regularly because the accumulation of, of sand and dust on their surface can reduce their efficiency. 
And so uh, a company called Ecopia has designed this very simple robotic system that are used for, for cleaning the panels. And it is, they are claimed to be 10 times faster than manual cleaning while using 75% less water, which is a, a huge improvement in my opinion. And once again, we can see how the task is repetitive with little variability and the physical interaction is, is very simple. Another example is uh, robotics helping agriculture. For instance, this robot over here is used for killing weeds, which was one of the few tasks in automation that hadn't been automatized yet. The main advantage of using this robot is that it, it heavily reduces the amount of herbicide that needs to be used up to 20 times because instead of spraying the whole crop, the robot can detect where wheat is and just use a microdose of herbicide at that specific spot. Once again, a repetitive task with little variability and with basically no physical interaction because the robot can just spray the wheat at a distance without really making a, a contact with that. So we have seen a few examples of what robots can already do to help us, but I'm a researcher, so that's boring to me. I want to see what they cannot do yet, but they might be able to do in the near future. And in particular, one example I find very interesting, both scientifically and in terms of actual impacts on society, is helping in case of, of natural or man-made disasters. In particular, it was after the nuclear disaster of Fukushima in 2011 that the robotics community has realized that robots were actually not ready yet to help us in this kind of events. So the US Defense Department, the DARPA, has launched an, an international robotics competition uh, to, to stimulate the development of, of robots that could uh, navigate this kind of uh, dangerous and, and degraded environment while executing a number of complex tasks such as uh, opening doors, climbing stairs, uh, using a, a drill, uh, connecting a fire hose or turning on a valve. And we can immediately see why these tasks are way more difficult than the ones we have seen before because this is a, a non-repetitive task, the robot needs to do many different things and there is a high degree of variability because each thing can, can be done in many different ways according to what the robot encounters. And there is some, some really complex physical interaction between the robots and the environment and the tools that it needs to use. Indeed, this is still a subject of, of active research in, in human and robotics and that's what I'm actually working on personally. A very similar uh, skill set will be also necessary for space missions. Uh, recently, NASA has, has tried to, to stimulate the community to develop new control algorithms to allow its humanoid robot, Valkyrie, which is this guy, uh, to go on a mission to Mars. The final goal for NASA is, uh, before sending humans to Mars, to send a spaceship full of these robots, which could, for instance, set up a space camp in preparation for human arrival. So we have seen that robots are already help, helping us and they may be able to help us even more in the near future thanks to progress of, of research in, in robotics. But unfortunately, that's not the only thing that uh, robotics is doing. In particular, in 2013, there has been a, a report by Oxford Economist that has predicted that almost half of US employment was at risk of losing their job because of automation. Now, whether this prediction is, pre is accurate or not is still subject of active debate. But I personally think that it's a risk we should all be aware of because even if its probability is low, well, its consequences would be really severe, such as increased inequality, poverty, crime, or even political instability. In particular, one 
industry that is expected to, to be hit really hard is retail, which constitutes nowadays 10% of the US labor market, which is huge. And half of retail workers are considered to be at risk of losing their jobs because of automation. And if you look at the tasks that a robot has to perform, it shouldn't be surprising because it's a repetitive task with little variability and with no uh, physical interaction between the robot and its surrounding. Another industry that's expected to be hit hard is the garment industry. Here, uh, the main challenge is definitely uh, the manipulation of the fabric. You should know that for robots, uh, manipulating soft materials is much harder than rigid objects because they can deform, they can stretch, they can fold. But in recent years, we have seen some, some serious progress in this area. And so I wouldn't be surprised if this kind of robots enter the, the industry uh, in, in the near future. So, we have seen a bit of both sides of robotics. They can help us build a better future by making renewable energy more efficient, by making agriculture more sustainable, helping us in, kind, in, in case of natural disasters, but they can also create social problems by taking away uh, jobs. So how should we feel in the end about robotics? Are they friends or foes? Well, in the end, it depends on us, doesn't it? I mean, robotics, artificial intelligence, automation, these are just technologies. So it, it is our duty and our duty only to make sure that they are used for the interest of humanity at large and not for the interest of a small minority. Now, the million dollar question is, how do we do that? And I think that answering this question goes way beyond my expertise as a researcher in robotics. But a few ideas uh, are already uh, subject of, of discussion. So let, let's take a look at them. Uh, one of these ideas is uh, the introduction of universal basic income, which basically consists in, in providing to anybody a sufficient amount of money for their survival without any requirement for people to, to work or even to look for work. Now, this may sound great at first, but there are some serious concerns about how such a program could be funded, given that the required amount of money would be huge. Another option is the introduction of a robot tax, which was originally proposed by Bill Gates. This basically consists in taxing companies that deploy robots that create uh, job losses. And the resulting tax income could then be used, for instance, to, to retrain people who lost their job. Uh, however, even this idea has been uh, harshly criticized because taxing robots could actually uh, discourage the, the, the adoption of new technology in, in the industry and thus slow down progress, efficiency, and, and, te and technological uh, research, which is something that we may not want after all. And, and finally, another factor that's going to play a big role is the price of electricity. Because robots nowadays are very profitable because the price of electricity is low. But moving towards a future of diminishing natural resources and maybe with a bit more consciousness about how these resources should be used, uh, the price of electricity may rise, thus making automation less convenient especially in, in developing countries where cheap labor is always available. So to wrap up, it seems to be a, a really complicated and interdisciplinary problem for which, of course, I don't have any simple solution to offer. But the way I see it is that humanity has reached kind of a, of a crossroad. We can decide to let technology drive us towards a future of, of natural disaster, poverty, crime, and, and inequality, or we can decide to take control over our future and exploit technology to our advantage to achieve the goals that we believe to be important, such as uh, fighting climate change, developing a culture of global sustainability, 
and, and making sure that the future generations will have the same opportunities that we have had during our lifetime. In the end, uh, it will all depend on us, and I really hope that we'll make the right choice. Thank you.